February of 1913, a young psychologist from Johns Hopkins University gave a famous lecture at Columbia University in New York where he boldly denounced psychology's infatuation with unconsciousness and introspective methods of research. His name was John Watson, and with that lecture, he founded the school of psychology called Behaviorism. He argued that only the study of something tangible, like behavior, should be relevant and promoted proper scientific investigation. At Johns Hopkins, he conducted research in behaviorism, and to him, the goal of psychology was behavior control. He wrote books on child-rearing techniques and also gave lectures on the advertising industry. This was perhaps a foreshadowing of things to come. In the fall of 1920, however, Watson's involvement in an extramarital affair resulted in him being relieved of his academic position at Johns Hopkins. He was unable to acquire other academic positions and it was then that he decided to make his transition into the advertising industry. He moved to New York City and started what was to become a successful career in one of the country's top advertising firms. J. Walter Thompson was already one of the top ad firms in the 1920s, and to fully appreciate Watson's role, it is important to understand why the company was interested in hiring a psychologist. Stanley Reeser was the president of J.W. Thompson at the time of Watson's hiring, and he had visions of making his company more scientific and professional in the advertising industry. Hiring someone, a psychologist, a person of higher education, was essential for the professional image of the firm. But perhaps even more influential was the fact that Stanley Reeser was a holder of the belief that customers could be influenced in the so-called buying behavior. He felt that there had to be ways to influence consumers' responses to advertising. This notion fit well with John Watson's belief in behavior control. To Watson, we're all machine-like. With his behaviorist ideas, he believed that all he needed to do was push the correct buttons to trigger this buying behavior. When Watson first started at the company, he still needed experience and he had to learn the ways of the industry. He had to partake in door-to-door -door sales of rubber boots and had to clerk at Macy's department store. Watson said he enjoyed his time learning the profession and he even proclaimed that he was an ad man first and that he would only use psychology to address problems should they arise. However, it was while learning the trade that he noticed peculiarities in buying behavior. Behavior control was Watson's goal and he had identified what he deemed to be three fundamental human emotions, love, fear, and rage. These emotions control all aspects of human behavior. In his now controversial Little Albert experiment, he demonstrated that he could induce a fearful behavioral reaction towards an innocent object by associating the object with a stimuli of averse nature. He felt that this experiment demonstrated behavior control and that customer buying behavior was also influenced by these three emotions. Brand loyalty is still a relevant topic in contemporary marketing research and John Watson has to be considered a pioneer. He conducted an experiment where subjects were given different brands of cigarettes to smoke. Later, they were again asked to smoke but this time with the cardboard screen between the cigarettes and themselves. Watson found that the subjects couldn't distinguish the brand but innately they still preferred specific brands. He suspected that the product's quality itself wasn't necessarily the only factor in maintaining brand loyalty. Consumers function on emotions and they were buying the atmosphere, the idea that was associated with the product. The advertisement was a stimuli that stirred up the fundamental emotions, which in turn elicited a buying behavior response. The important thing was to make the brand personable and closer to the consumer. One of Watson's own ad accounts was Johnson's Baby Powder, and he demonstrated his technique by associating the product with concepts of hygiene, purity, innocence, care, and the image of a loving mother. He extended the ideas into the use of testimonials in advertising, and again, he showed that testimonies aroused the fundamental emotions and affected buying behavior. Even though Watson was hired as an account man, it was clear that the firm wanted him to represent the company in public. He was promoted into a vice president position and was often invited to speak at conferences and conventions. Watson spoke about his theories on behaviorism and his belief in the application of these theories in the advertising industry. 
Watson is well known for his founding of behaviorism and is credited with giving psychology a breath of fresh air. However, his contributions to psychology after his banishment from academics are just as important. His bold and intrepid nature allowed psychological ideas to enter public domains, and he demonstrated to the world that psychology could function as an applied science.